Every year, more than 600,000 women suffer from a maternal mental health disorder, but less than 15% receive treatment. Welcome to Advancing Health, a podcast from the American Hospital Association. I'm Tom Petterly, executive speechwriter with AHA. Joining Aisha Sayeda, program manager at the AHA, is Dr. Nimojit Dami, medical director of inpatient perinatal psychiatry at El Camino Health, and Dr. Alpa Shah, director of the perinatal mental health clinic at Marshfield Clinic Health System. Our guests will describe their work to reduce the prevalence and impact of maternal mental health illnesses, such as depression and anxiety. Thank you, Tom. Dr. Dami and Dr. Shah, thank you for speaking with me today. Both of you have contributed in designing initiatives to combat depression and anxiety in new and expectant moms. Dr. Dami, let's start with you. Can you describe the work you are doing through El Camino Health Maternal Outreach Mood Services also known as the MOMS program, which I understand reaches both inpatient and outpatient settings. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me here. And I'm Nirmal Dami. I'm the medical director of the inpatient perinatal psychiatry unit. El Camino Hospital launched an intensive outpatient program targeting perinatal population in 2008. At that time, it was the first one on the West Coast and probably amongst a handful in the country. And what prompted this was the sad event in the community that then led to a task force being formed and eventually the program being launched. From 2008 onwards, the program grew. We developed a partial level of care, but over time realized that women with serious mental illness needed way more support and there was lack of specialized inpatient services for women that were pregnant and or, and or postpartum and struggling with mental health issues. In collaboration with UNC, a pilot was done with four beds and eventually with extensive support from our community, tremendous support from El Camino Foundation, the management of El Camino Hospital, immense donor support. We were able to launch a specialized unit for perinatal mental health issues, a specialized women's focused unit, and we opened it last year in August. And currently, we're in the process of collaborating with our existing OB and NICU services and helping more with the integration of mental health services in obstetrics and NICU settings. So the MOMS program, which started off as an intensive outpatient program, grew from strength to strength and resulted in the launch of this highly specialized inpatient psychiatry unit, and I believe it's the third one in the country. And currently, we treat mothers with severe mental illnesses across the spectrum, so from inpatient to partial to intensive outpatient, and then we transition them to outpatient level of care. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I'm excited to hear um, what those outcomes are like post-integrating this uh, program into both inpatient and outpatient settings. Dr. Shah, you lead the perinatal mental health clinic at Marshfield Clinic. What sparked the creation of this and what does it offer to moms? Yes, so thank you for uh, having me here, Aisha, and it really is a pleasure to be talking with you about an area that I think is so critical, not only uh, to the health of moms, but also their families and the um, health of the children the, the, into their childhood and further adulthood. So what sparked the creation of this program really stems back to really going back in time to uh, my residency in OBGYN and interactions with patients where I found that the uh, separation between the um, uh, usual perinatal care, postpartum care, and mental health uh, created some challenges and the lack of awareness on the part of obese as well as some of the stigma around mental health uh, created gaps in uh, healthcare for this vulnerable population. 
fast forward to uh, post-residency going into psychiatry and then uh, real-world practice, there were several things that kind of, uh, it's a confluence of factors. In my practice, uh, the fact that I'm interested in reproductive psychiatry and women's mental health, that was a population I saw. But um, we ended up in situations where we would have frequent no-shows with a growing standby list, delayed care to women who were pregnant, uh, a fragmented approach uh, to the care that was being delivered. And while we had several interested individuals in OBGYN, in pediatrics, therapists in my department, and then myself included, it seemed like we were doing our own thing. Along with that, uh, there were concerns in the state about two uh, maternal suicides that had happened back to back. And the uh, factors leading to that was some ill-advised decisions around the discontinuation of antidepressants in the postpartum mom as well as the pregnant uh, woman. So those were the factors that kind of came together where um, I thought that it was important to bring together different groups, different disciplines and specialties, and pull together a program that really focused on maternal mental health, uh, more so perinatal mental health, starting with prevention, supporting intervention and treatment, as well as the screening aspects of it. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for providing that overview. I want to learn what some of the outcomes have been for moms since integrating these initiatives. Dr. Dami, can you talk about the MOMS program first? And then Dr. Shah, I'd like to hear from you about the Perinatal Mental Health Clinic. Yes, absolutely. I would be more than thrilled to talk about it. I think as I, I'm going to give a lot of anecdotal information here, but as I look at, you know, one of the biggest barometers for for measuring success for any clinician, and specifically psychiatry, I think, is the feedback from patients. And over the year, the biggest source of referral to our mom's program have been the patients that have gone through the program. They have also gone, gone ahead and been the biggest advocates for growth of their service because of the unmet need in the community. So I think if I think about outcomes, that's one of the most successful outcomes that we've had over the years. Dr. Shah touched on maternal suicide, and I've actually served on a task force, and we looked at all the maternal suicides in the state of California over a period of 10 years. And one of the things that stands out very clearly, not just in California, but around the world in terms of perinatal mental health and reducing perinatal suicide is having integrated programs and a really robust discharge plan when a patient discharges from an inpatient level of care because their level of completed suicide is very high within the first year of discharge. And fortunately, again, anecdotally, I think we have done great work in preventing that within our system and setting. Not that it's 100% preventable, but I do acknowledge that that's been great work. I The third thing that in terms of outcomes that really stands out for me is the feedback we receive from families. Again, what Dr. Shah was talking about, when we set up moms, the thought was to treat the mother, but also treat the mother and the baby, and also, and then address mother, baby, and the family unit, and we do that quite successfully. Some of our patients that have received treatment in other hospital settings tell us that they have not had access to connect with their babies for the duration of their inpatient stay, and then suddenly they're discharged back home, and they're expected to take over parenting as though nothing happened. What we do quite successfully in our program is integrating the role of a mother dealing with significant mental health issues, combining those two, and getting more support for the family. So in terms of outcomes, those are the things. We, of course, use standardized scales like the EPDS. We have our own El Camino mom scale, and then we have a global rating scale that we often use in the program, and all of those show improvement in symptoms when people discharge from the program. But I do think it's the feedback from our patients over years that stands out as the most successful outcome for the work we do. Thank you for that, Dr. Dami. And I think that's a really important point that you made that without having the feedback from patients and their families, you can't keep doing the same work. So you need to make sure that they are satisfied with the care that's being provided to them. And I'm glad that you're collecting data that shows that patients and their families have been assisted properly with the care that you're providing them. 
Dr. Shah, can you share some outcomes from your program? Sure, and I realized that there was a second part to your first question, which was what does this program offer? And it's probably good that I answer that here to link it with the uh, talk about outcomes. So the program here at our uh, Marshfield Clinic Health System is really an outpatient program. It's a comprehensive, multidisciplinary clinical program that provides services to women in the reproductive age group who are either at risk for, who are either suffering from psychiatric illnesses during pregnancy or postpartum. It's a team of clinicians, both uh, psychotherapy as well as uh, expertise in pharmacological management, who provide a collaborative approach with OBGYN and pediatrics to provide services to the population. And the approach in this program is uh, mostly patient-centric from the standpoint of flexible scheduling. And so patients basically are told to show up between um, 8 and 11. And as long as they show up in that time frame, they will uh, get seen. This addresses some of the barriers that uh, women in this age group, this population experiences as far as making it to appointments, transportation, cost of transportation, child care, coordinating multiple appointments. So it's designed around the patient, the unique barriers, and the need to pull together different expertise and do that in a coordinated and collaborative fashion. But the main thing, um, I think, is the timely assessment uh, and intervention. And with that in mind, we try to accommodate at least contact with the patients within 48 to 72 hours over the phone by a nurse, and then try to see them within the first week um, of the referral, so five to seven days. So as we think about the outcomes then, and not so much from the quantitative standpoint, but I think about it qualitatively and in terms of trends, and whether the program really delivered on what it was intended to or designed to deliver. And we wanted to make sure that we were identifying women early and they were getting in to see uh, the clinicians in a timely fashion. And with this program, we have seen that the um, wait time to appointments has dropped. It was not uncommon for me when I first started practice that I would see patients who had waited two, three months to get in to see me, or the referring clinicians, the OBs and primary care were referring patients long after the woman first started struggling. So I would see patients mostly as a referral for postpartum depression and often six months and later postpartum. And what we've seen is a change in the trend as far as the pattern of referrals and the timing of referrals. It's uncommon for me to see a patient who is past two or three months postpartum. More commonly, I see patients antepartum being referred, either where the um, OB has identified concern that somebody has risk factors for um, worsening depression or postpartum depression, or even primary care reaching out to say, I have somebody who's thinking of getting pregnant. We want to talk about uh, what are the best options. And so that is the change in trend in terms of the timing of the referrals and the types of referrals. We're identifying women early, we're intervening early, and so we see lower morbidity. Fewer hospitalizations. I think for 20 years of doing this here, I can count less than 10 patients that we've had to hospitalize for severity of illness or refractory um, illness or delay in diagnosis and intervention. So I think that's how I would sum up the outcomes for our program. Thank you, Dr. Shah. And as you know, there's a lot of stigma around mental health. How are you tackling this? Dr. Shah, do you have some success factors that you can share in encouraging women to talk about their mental health and seek help or treatment? Yes, definitely. And I think it goes back to the basics and some fundamental key principles around raising awareness and education. And before we get to, uh, you know, raising awareness among women, they really follow their doctors and listen to their doctors. So the education and awareness starts with primary care, with OBGYN, and with pediatrics normalizing the fact that there is depression and anxiety during pregnancy, the myth about that being the time of well-being. We've moved past that and know otherwise. 
Also, the education about some of the basic uh, ways of managing the illness in primary care and OB, and really integrating mental health with OBGYN as well as with pediatrics. So when it comes to tackling stigma, when you integrate the two, when you talk about mental illness as a medical illness, When we talk with women as well as their physicians outside of the mental health realm and discuss this in medical terms, we know depression in pregnancy and postpartum depression is one of the most common complications of pregnancy, even uh, higher than diabetes and hypertension. It changes the conversation. So normalizing it, making sure we're talking about it in medical terms, integrating it within the other uh, disciplines of medicine. And then uh, really, when we start screening and making screening the norm, that again helps address the stigma. So I think some of the fundamentals that we have adopted in combating stigma and helping women talk about it really centers around awareness, education, collaboration, coordination, integration of services, and uh, helping women make informed decisions and helping them know that there are choices. A lot of times women feel stuck, and then this particular population, when there are concerns around social services or the stigma related to custody issues or the worst case scenarios that they hear in the media, women are afraid to talk about it. So if we do all of the things that I talked about earlier, and then also talk with patients about some informed decision making and choices that they have. That, I think, all put together is kind of a multi-pronged approach. That's helped us tackle the stigma and help women be more willing to come forward and have conversations around this. Those are some great suggestions, Dr. Shah. Thank you for sharing that. Dr. Dami, we know that good mental health shouldn't be temporary. It should span throughout the life of an individual. How should hospitals work towards creating solutions for better mental health throughout a woman's lifespan? Oh, thank you, Aisha. This this answer may take forever, but I'll try to keep it succinct. So first of all, I want to kind of take a step back and look at it globally. I, I think that El Camino Health is really the trailblazer for providing inpatient and outpatient perinatal services in, in the country. And if we look around the world, you know, there are many other countries that have done this quite well. A lot of countries in Europe have provided really good and successful care for women in hospital-based settings. I agree with you, mental health should span the lifetime of an individual. And for women, there are certain times when the mental health crises are, you know, peak or they have a higher likelihood of developing a mental health issue. Pregnancy is one of them. So it's really a gateway for all of us to help a woman deal with mental health issues. And I do agree with the talk about the shame and the comment about shame, stigma, you know, educating people, integrating services. I think for hospitals, it's critical to really think about integrating women's mental health at every level and and in different services. What really saddens me is the lack of that integrated care in inpatient psychiatry units across the country. And I think that's really unfortunate. It not only leads to poor level of care for the patient, but down the lane also poor consequences for the entire family unit. And there's tremendous research on that. So hospitals can do a lot more, I think, at multiple levels, you know, in terms of financial planning and how they think about direct and indirect cost and committing to support these initiatives, fundraising with the communities, you know, soliciting donor support, reaching out to local law enforcement, reaching out to providers, reaching out to individual organizations, reaching out to shelters. I think the hospitals can do tremendous work in that. Most hospitals have resources to do it. One thing that I also want to point out that can be easily done by a lot of hospital settings is providing free education. For example, El Camino does a free symposium every year to support perinatal mental health, and our foundation supports it. But it's a free symposium. We get people from speakers from around the world discuss perinatal mental health issues. One integral part of that symposium is a peer panel in which patients that have gone through mental health issues come forward with their stories and also what they think has benefited them and what has not worked for them. I think that's a powerful, powerful way to reduce shame and stigma and really reach out to everyone in the community. 
another part of the peer symposium this year is going to be a panel of NICU patients and another panel that we're doing with UNC to discuss other treatments for perinatal mental health, which are not just limited to medications, which offers, again, a lot of hope for women that they can get better and do better and thrive. So I do think that hospitals can do tremendous amount of work. I also believe that there is tremendous community support to support that work, but there needs to be a critical shift in thinking and supporting women's health issues and women's mental health issues for that work to be undertaken. Thank you, both of you, for sharing insights and outcomes from your um, programs at your respective hospitals. For more information around maternal mental health, please visit our website at aj.org and let us know what you are doing around maternal mental health. Thank you for your time today.